Hello friends, welcome back to India for IAS. This is Manjunath Mudol. In this video, we are going to study about direct seeding of rice. This topic falls under GS3 paper. This topic falls under GS3 paper, agriculture. Agriculture, within agriculture, paddy cultivation. So the topic is important for both uh, prelims and maids. So this is both important for both prelims and maids. So the direct seeding of rice was in news because the pace of adoption of direct seeding of rice in Punjab is very slow. So adoption of direct seeding of rice by the farmers in Punjab, it is very slow. Even though the Punjab government is actively promoting this technique of uh, direct seeding of rice, but its adoption among the farmers is very slow. So this direct seeding of rice, it can reduce the water usage by 15 to 20 percent compared to the conventional paddy cultivation. It requires less labor and matures faster compared to the traditional methods. And farmers get incentive of rupees 1500 per acre if they are going to adopt direct seeding of rice. So despite its uh, so many benefits and incentives, it is not widely adopted in Punjab. So now we will do the comparative study of traditional method of paddy cultivation and the direct seeding of rice. In the traditional method of paddy cultivation, the seeds are sown in nurseries and they are grown for 25 to 35 days. So then the seedlings are uprooted and transplanted into the fields. So as we can see here, the farmers are transplanting the seedlings. So this method is labor intensive and it is also water intensive but it maximizes the yields and crop health. So in this uh, method, the traditional method of uh, paddy cultivation is labor intensive and it is also water intensive, which we can see here. And this image shows the direct seeding of rice. So coming to the direct seeding of rice process. So in the direct seeding of rice, the field, agriculture field, it is laser leveled and irrigated before seeding of the paddies. So in seeding process, paddy seeds are directly sown into the prepared field using a seed drill or a lucky seeder before 20 to 30 days earlier than the traditional transplantation method. So in traditional transplantation method, what happens? The seeds are sown in nurseries for 25 to 35 days, then the seedlings are transplanted. Whereas here, the seeds are sown 20 to 30 days earlier than the traditional transplantation method. Coming to the seed treatment, seeds are soaked in fungicide solution for 8 hours. So then they are dried for a half a day before sowing to enhance their germination. So this fungicide, it uh, prevents the attack of fungus to the seeds. So coming to the irrigation schedule of uh, direct seeding of rice, the first irrigation is done 21 days after sowing. So the subsequent irrigations, around 14 to 17 more rounds of irrigations, they are done at 7 to 10 days intervals and uh, this irrigation is adjusted based on the soil type and monsoon conditions. If the rainfall is good enough, then the irrigation schedule and the number of uh, irrigation rounds, they vary. Then coming to the final irrigation, it is done 10 days, 10 days before the harvest of the paddy. So if we compare the traditional method and the direct seeding of rice, the irrigation requirement in traditional method is 25 to 27 irrigations in total whereas in DSR it is 14 to 17. In this way DSR reduces the amount of water required for the growth of paddy crop. So coming to the soil type, this DSR is suitable for heavy or medium to heavy textured soils and it is not suitable for light textured soils because the light textured soils they, they do not retain water effectively. So this is not suitable for DSR, the reason being, so it requires more irrigation. So, so instead of saving water, so here water requirement increases, so it is not suitable. Whereas the heavy or medium to heavy soil, it retains water well and contributes to the success of the direct seeding of rice technique. Now we will look into the advantages of the direct seeding of rice compared to the conventional transplantation method of paddy cultivation. Coming to the water efficiency, direct seeding of rice, it reduces the water consumption by 30 to 50 percent compared to the traditional transplanting methods. So this is very crucial for with regions which have water scarcity. So it reduces the water requirement from 30 to 50 percent. 
So the second advantage is labor efficiency. This DSR technique, it significantly reduces the labor requirement compared to the conventional transplanting method. In conventional transplanting method, the labors are required. Whereas here, the labor, the need of labor is eliminated. The seed drills are used to sow the seeds. Then the third advantage is time saving. So this uh, third aspect is time saving. It shortens the crop cycle, crop cycle by seven to 10 days. So the farmers can get the harvest seven to 10 days earlier in comparison to the conventional transplanting method. So the fourth advantage is cost reduction. It lowers the overall cultivation costs by reducing the expenses on labor and nursery management. So the fifth advantage is it improves the soil health. So this promotes the better soil structure and reduces the methane emissions contributing to the environmental sustainability. So in conventional paddy cultivation, so the puddling is done. So puddling is done to transplant the seedlings of rice. So this method is eliminated and the continuous standing of water is also eliminated. So by this it helps the soil health and it also reduces the emission of methane. In India, agriculture, especially the paddy cultivation is one of the major emitter of methane to the environment. And this methane is a greenhouse gas. It contributes to the global warming and climate change. So coming to the challenges associated with direct seeding of rice, the first challenge is weed management. So the direct seeding of rice fields are highly prone to the weed infestation. So this requires effective weed control strategies and this also increases the use of herbicides. So the second challenge is pest and disease management. So there is an increased risk of pests and diseases in the direct seeding of rice fields and this increases the cost of pest management. The third challenge is water management. So in direct seeding of rice, proper irrigation techniques are very critical. Over and under watering can adversely affect the crop fields. Then the fourth challenge is soil fertility. This DSR technique, it might lead to the depletion of soil nutrients if not managed properly. So this is associated with every agricultural practices and each of the crop cultivation. So if the DSR technique, it is not properly managed, then it might lead to the depletion of soil nutrients. Then the fifth challenge is adaption barriers. It means the farmers are not trained properly regarding the DSR techniques and the understanding of DSR techniques is also not made readily available to the farmers. This is all about the direct seeding of rights, its features, advantages and challenges. So here we have provided one prelims practice question based on the topic that is direct seeding of rice. So there are three statements in this question. Go through the statements and comment your answer. The answer and detailed explanation for this question is available in the PDF handout. The PDF handout also contains the detailed notes of this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Till then, happy learning.